Okay, so picture this. You're at a fancy party, having a good time, you know, maybe a little bit uncomfortable, but finally settling in. And then all of a sudden, your friend hands you a bottle of champagne or Prosecco and casually asks you to open the bottle. All of a sudden, you are struck with fear, social anxiety, and paranoia. Because the last time you opened a bottle of sparkling wine, it looked something like this. <laughs> Good news is, once you know the principles of opening sparkling wine, it's really not that scary. Yes, it's true that it is an extremely important task and the relative happiness of both you and your friends for at least the next 20 minutes may be dependent on the result of that task, but I believe you are the hero for the job. So one of the first and most important things you need to do when opening your bottle of sparkling wine is to make sure that it's cold enough. So you can either chill it in the fridge for at least three hours, or if you're short on time, a little trick is to actually wrap a damp tea towel around the bottle and put it in the freezer, and then it should be cold within about 30 minutes. Another popular trick that's often used in restaurants is to actually just use an ice bucket. So if you take a bucket, fill it with ice and some cold water and a couple of handfuls of salt, your wine should be cold within about 15 minutes. And if you're like me in a snowy area, you can always use Canada's cooler and stick the bottle in the snow. Hot tip, if your wine isn't cold enough, not only will it be less delicious, but there will also be greater odds of it exploding on you. So just make sure that it's cold. First step is to remove the foil. So normally there's a little tab that you can actually just grab to break off the foil. If you want it to look nice and clean, you could just use your wine knife as well and do a little slit so that it comes off nice and tidy. After the foil comes the cage. So there's a little tab here and you're going to untwist the tab while you're keeping your thumb on top of the cage. This is just precaution in case it decides to explode. It shouldn't explode, but there's a lot of power within this bottle, so you always wanna be on the safe side. I'm actually going to remove the cage. It would be more correct to leave the cage on when you remove the cork. I prefer to take the cage off. While you're doing that again, hold it on a 45 degree angle and just make sure you're not ever pointing the cork at somebody. Holding the bottle at a 45 degree angle, keep your thumb on top of the cork and you're going to have a really nice grip on the cork like this and then this finger here and then the rest of my hand around. And from here, you're going to twist the bottle. Most people think you twist the cork, but actually you twist the bottle. So once you start twisting the bottle, I can feel the cork actually releasing already. As it's releasing, if it's coming out kind of quickly, you can sort of put pressure back onto the cork just to make sure that you're controlling it. Slowly twisting the bottle, and here it comes. That was a really nice sound. So you don't actually want the champagne or the cab or the Prosecco, whatever sparkling wine you're opening it, you don't want it to be a loud, obnoxious cork. The lighter kind of like hiss that you can get, the more correct you opened the bottle. So that was successful. Pour a little glass. and cheers. Mm. I love sparkling wine. So now you can say goodbye to your social anxiety of opening sparkling wine. If you're still feeling thirsty, check out this video next where I show you how to make a Negroni Spagliato. Cheers.